comes down to it, Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden with God, mm -hmm. and God is omniscient, and God knows the future, mm -hmm. and God puts the tree of knowledge of good and evil in spot X. Yeah. And when he does that, he knows sure. that Adam is going to eat that fruit. Yeah. He knows it's going to cause the fall of man, and billions of souls will go to hell, mm -hmm. and according to you, babies will start being born with cancer. Okay. If he puts the tree of knowledge over here, it doesn't happen. Or if he doesn't put it there at all, it doesn't happen. But God puts it where he knows with 100% certainty that Adam is going to eat of that fruit. Who made that choice? You have paradise lost in Genesis, paradise regained in Revelation. You are totally avoiding Everything my question. Is, no, I'm, I'm Before getting Before Adam ate that apple, he was without sin. Yes. Before he ate he that apple, chose. he was without sin. God put the tree here. Yes. He knew it would yes. cause the fall of man. Yes. God pushed Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. God made the decision. Yes. God made the choice. And then God made the choice to go in and rescue them. So that's what then, the redemption is all then, about. You know, this is one of those stories about the Bible that has never, ever, 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 ever made sense. And still to this day does not make sense. You are first initially starting with a perfect God and a God that y'all believe is in perfect goodness. And that perfect good, perfect God initially made the mistake of creating angels who he knew was going to revolt and create this energy called the devil. Then after this perfectly good God said, I'm going to try again. And I'm going to create man, but I know that man is going to fall because I'm going to put a tree right in his midst that I know he's going to be disobedient. He's going to eat from the tree. Then I'm going to let man go through all these judges and all these kings and all these rituals and all these laws. And I know that man can't keep any of those things so that he can be redeemed back to me. And then I'm going to come down, impregnate a 14 year old girl against her will. Then I'm going to sac teach for a little bit, sacrifice myself to myself so that man can then be redeemed. That is the mental gymnastic, the delusion that Christians take themselves through in order to believe in this God and to uh, stay away from going to hell. This is what your perfectly good God came up with as the best plan, not a better plan of saying, when I created everything, I know that in order to create good, I must also create evil. But I want these perfect creations. I want these perfect beings to be with me. I'm a good guy, so I don't want to send anybody to hell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all that is comprised of evil. And I'm going to put this on Pluto. He won't be able to reach Pluto. I'm going to put this on Pluto. Matter of fact, no, Pluto might be too close. Let me put this like on the other side of the universe so that man in all his ingenuity, will never be able to reach it. So that's what I'm going to do. And then that way I can have my perfect beings come and be with my perfect me as a perfect God because I've created a plan that allows for man to be perfect in his goodness because that's what this God requires and needs in order for you to be able to be with him. That's a better plan. But instead, this guy says, nope, 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 nope. I'm going to create this imperfect being that I know billions of them are going to fail. I know that billions of them are going to have to go to this uh, hellscape that I'm creating, this lake of fire or, you know, whatever you believe in as far as hell. I'm going to create an environment where I know that the overwhelming majority of them are not going to make it. And then I'm going to have to punish them and they're going to be punished in this lake of fire. And I, as God, as being omniscient, will always know that there are beings, billions and billions and billions of beings that are being punished and tormented in this hell for all eternity. And, and that's fine with me because I'm a good God. I'm a perfect God. You see how it doesn't make any sense? You see how putting the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the presence of the imperfect being that you know is going to fall? Does it make sense that you then know you're going to have to come and try to redeem them, but yet you still know that even in that redemption is still not going to work for the overwhelming majority of people? Even in your teachings, you said that there will be those who will call me by my name, those who will do miracles and magic all, you know, in my name, and yet they will still not know me. You are still saying that even those who believe will still perish in this lake of fire because their name won't be written in your book your book of life. That's your perfectly good God. It sounds like a corrupt, narcissistic, imperfect being that created an imperfect plan. 
But what it really is, it is an imperfect man living in an imperfect society. And when they try to figure out how is it that bad people are on this planet doing bad things and they must get punished in some form or fashion, especially those who seem to have the better portions of life on this planet, that they have to lose in the end. They have to be defeated in the end. And all these poor people who are struggling just to live their life, but they're good people, they have to win in the end. We have to create a story that says that they get to win in the end, that temporarily you may be victorious over those who are believing in this God. But in the end, the first will be last and the last will be first. We have to make it so that we feel better about our plight in life and that we can try to understand why life is not fair. So let's create this God who we're going to deem as perfect, but this God had a plan. This God had a plan. And you got to think about it. The people in the time of Abraham, Noah, uh, Jacob, Isaac, the, time, the times of Moses, they had no idea about this redemption plan. They had no idea about the coming of Jesus to them life was how it is then the redemption was how it was then following and obeying the laws was was your way of redemption they had no idea of the jesus part of the plan so they are only subject to that part of the plan and so it made sense to them that's why their plan is different from the plan of the end if god truly wanted to redeem man then at the end of the adam and eve story he would have came down as jesus and he, and he would have been the sacrifice he would have been the sacrifice then that way, all of man throughout the rest of history would have known what the final plan was and how to get redeemed. He could have even done it at the time frame of Moses and said that, OK, uh, this is going to be the new redemption plan. Or instead of Noah uh, sacrificing all those animals, he could have came down and sacrificed himself so that all the, the new creation of man based on this story from Noah's children could have known the redemption plan. But no, he had to wait a few thousand years. And then, oh, 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 all that other shit didn't work. Let, let, me, let me do this. This is my final redemption plan. It's man writing stories, creating a God for themselves to justify the life that they see around them. And that's it. And that's all. This is one reason why we walk away from this religion. So y'all have a great day. And always remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.